Hi everyone, welcome back to another analysis episode for Hirachi Sotsu. As you know, on Thursday, the last part for Watakashi was released and goodness, it was an outstanding and amazing episode because we finally found out the truth and the way they portrayed the truth was just phenomenal. I mean, I can't wait to talk about that part. But first things first, uh, we're going to start um, analyzing each part, well, each scene of this whole episode because, goodness, it was just so amazing, so disturbing, and pretty frightening because uh, on this arc, well, in this um, particular timeline, Sarako decided to inject Mion with H173 to see what outcome it could have on this uh, timeline. So she's curious to see uh, what consequences it could have. And the consequences were just so disturbing. I mean, not to the degree that Shion um, did both in Watanagashi and Meakashi, but it was still frightening seeing Mion with H173 and hearing that laugh and, oh goodness. But um, first things first, as I stated before, let's begin uh, reviewing each scene for uh, the whole episode of Higurachi Sotsu. So the episode continues from June 19. As you know, on this night, uh, Mion kills her sister Shion, thinking that it's her fault that now Keiichi is gonna fall to the curse. So on this episode, we see Mion um, dragging her grandmother's body into the underground prison to question her. I mean, we even see her putting her in that torture chair or whatever that device is called. But of course, Oreo is already dead by that time because uh, Mion tased her with Shion's taser. And of course, when Mion realizes that her grandmother is dead, she starts lamenting her death, but then she realizes that there's still two heads of the three families alive. So this proceeds to Mion calling Kimiyoshi and telling him to come to the Sonisaki mansion with the excuse that her grandmother wants to talk to him. And as this conversation is going, we see Shion's dead body is still lying there. And it's just so horrifying that Mion hasn't even taken up the time to dispose of her sister's body yet. Once she tastes Kimiyoshi and ties him to a chair, she demands to know who's behind the curse. Of course, Kimiyoshi is unable to give her an answer because he has no idea what Mion is talking about and this is where things get quite disturbing. Mion starts removing his nails with the same device they forced Shion to use to rip out three of her own nails. And I just couldn't bear to watch the scene. Even though it got a little bit censured, it just reminded me of that time where poor Shion ripped out one of her nails, then um, was unable to rip out the other nail properly, and then one of the guards did the job for her. And hearing her scream and call for her mom was just uh, disturbing. And if this scene wasn't horrifying enough, we see that Mion took the torture to the next level. We then get to see Kimiyoshi's dead body is literally covered in blood well soaked in blood and has numerous nails inserted throughout his body i mean we even see an ear and numerous fingers on the bloodiest floor so you know that Mion did a horrible i mean horrible things to poor kimiyoshi before he died and we see Mion is soaked in blood and states that there's only one member of the three families left. Then the following day, June 20th, as you know, this is the day where Rika disappears and everything just becomes like a big question mark. Like, what in the world happened here? We know on this day, uh, Mion went to look for the mayor and everyone already knows about his disappearance. We even get to see Mion eyeing Rika in suspicion. Then we go back to that particular scene where Rika and Keiichi are having a conversation and Mion overhears the older Rika ranting about this curse and this world already ending, that it's over. Of course, hearing this conversation just causes Mion to get even more suspicious of Rika and starts blaming her for the curse. I mean, this scene alone explains her ranting about Rika being responsible for the curse. Then after Keiichi leaves to go play with Sarako and the other kids, Mion confronts Rika and chokes her to death. And remember how I was wondering uh, where was Mion when Rika disappeared? And goodness, this scene was just so disturbing, man. After the afternoon classes start, uh, Chia notices that Rika is not even inside the classroom. Then we see Sarako confronting Keiichi as he was the last person she saw with Rika. We of course learned that Mion's words about 
seeing Rika talking to a construction guy was a lie. I mean, this lie was just trying to get us to believe that the mountain dogs got to Rika. We then get to see the whole school looking for Rika. And you know, when Keiichi enters that particular area, try to open the door, Mio calls him to get him out of there and telling him that, oh, she saw something in the roof to get Keiichi to leave and find a ladder to buy time. We then get to see Mio disposing of Rika's body in the septic tank. And it was just a very disturbing scene to see as Mion like literally just lets Rika's body just fall into the hole but seeing that it didn't properly fit she starts stomping on Rika's head to get the body inside there it was just so horrifying to see this scene after classes are canceled and everyone goes home we see those construction guys outside and they're observing Mion, Keiichi, and Rena. Mion immediately starts getting a bit suspicious of them as she walks past them with her friends. Then the next thing uh, we jump to is the empty bloody chair where Kimi Yoshi's body used to be and then we see Mion carrying her sister's corpse and disposing of it in the well. By this time we already know that she already disposed of Oriole's and Kimi Yoshi's bodies down that well as well. And finally we get to see one of the most crucial moments of Watakashi, that phone call. We see Mion calling Keiichi and telling him to meet up with him with a very frightened and paranoid expression. We even get to see a very interesting scene where Sarako stayed late at the school hoping to learn about Rika's disappearance. As you know, this is the worst possible scenario for her because she doesn't know if Rika is alive or dead. And in order to chase the same Rika, Sarako has to die after her. So seeing these circumstances that did not go in her favor, she does has to ask Mion directly. We then jump to Keiichi and Mion meeting each other and Mion luring Keiichi to her home. As you know, she wants to protect them from the curse. In the back, we see those construction guys once again. And we learn that these guys are not mountain dogs. They're actual police officers. After Kimi Yoshi's disappearance, Oishi became very, very suspicious of the Sonosaki family and he's having numerous police officers keeping tabs on Mion. We learned that they're just waiting for a reason to barge inside the Sonosaki mansion. And one of those answers I was waiting for, remember, uh, I kept asking myself, how did Sarko manage to get inside the Sonosaki mansion? And honestly, I'm quite upset with myself that I forgot such important detail. Remember how Rena was able to solve Rika's and Sarko's disappearance in Watanagashi? The missing soy sauce container and the pamphlet about the Sonosaki giving away soy sauce. We then get to see Sarako grabbing her empty container and making her way to the Sonisaki mansion. So honestly, I'm just so upset with myself that I forgot such important detail. God, I gotta pay attention, closer attention next time. We then see the police seeing Sarako arriving at the premises. And upon hearing the intercom, Mion goes to check the camera and sees Sarako outside. So it wasn't even the police officers uh, that Mion saw. It was Sarako. I mean, already suspicious, just filled with just so much paranoia. Mion immediately grabs her gun and goes to meet Sarako. Mion of course greets Sarako at the door and lets her inside while Sarako tells her that she's just here to get some soy sauce. Seeing that only people keep coming inside and not outside, Oishi is just becoming too nervous and concerned for the well-being of those people. So he decides to give the order to prepare the storm inside the premises and he's on his way there as well. We then get to see Keiichi knocking out the door and sees the police officers ready to storm inside the building. And this is the last thing of the episode and it's so brilliant and terrifying at the same time. We see Sarako and Mion walking together but the color of the background is a bright red, like the color of blood. This red color from the background has so much symbolism. Red is usually the color of truth, which fits this scene perfectly. Or also, this color is showing Mion's mental state. This scene alone reminded me of Sumihoro Boshi when we switch to Rena's perspective and we see that the text changes from white to a bright pink. And as the story progresses, the color slowly turns darker, showing her mental state. And eventually, the color becomes a blood red. And I heard that this uh, 
that text color was used in Unimeco, something called about red truth. So this scene alone is just so symbolic and I love the scene how it was portrayed. The color just fits perfectly because we're learning the truth but also we're seeing Mion's mental state. So back to the scene, Mion starts questioning uh, Sadako's real reasons for her being here to get soy sauce knowing that Rika is still missing. Sadako of course then lies to Mion to rattle her and tells her that oh Rika came out of hiding and she's just here to celebrate. Mion of course doesn't believe her lie and threatens her with her revolver. She demands to know who's in charge and who gave out the order to carry out the curse. Sato of course continues ignoring her questions and demands to know about Rika's whereabouts. Mion of course starts getting angry, frustrated and is ready to pull her trigger where Sadako is way faster and shoots Mion on the stomach. Mion cannot believe this and Sadako starts bragging about her skills and she even states that she only has Mion to thank for teaching her how to shoot properly. Mion of course tries to get her gun but we see Sadako shooting her hand, blowing up her fingers and kicks the gun away. Very very horrifying. I mean, oh god. We then get to see Sadako is easily able to overpower Mion as she still demands an answer to her question. Eventually Mion tells Sadako that Rika is already dead and upon learning the truth, she shoots Mion and then herself. Then the very last scene of this arc is the shot of Sadako and Mion's dead bodies on the floor with Sadako's gun in the middle. And this is how the entire arc ends and this scene alone, my goodness, it gave me so so much chills. It was so disturbing but phenomenally executed. I love that they added the color of blood red. Then after the episode ends we learned that we're gonna start the next arc which is called Tataria Kashihen and we're finally gonna get some answers for the next arc. As you know the end of that arc has a pretty shocking revelation. We see Oishi with H173. We know that Tepe returns here. Rika gets killed and we see that Hanyu she grants her the power to remove member who kills her. So I'm very very excited to see the following arc because there is still some questions. I'm gonna review my notes. I'm gonna watch the episodes once again because I want to know when exactly Sadako inject Oishi with H173. Also what happens to Keiichi when Sadako lures him to her home and how he immediately gets to L5 and starts beating up what appears to be Tepe but the blood splatters, the blood patterns don't look right. Some of them look real, some of them do not. So there's a lot of questions for the next arc and honestly I'm just so excited to watch the following episode. But anyways thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you for the next one.